About two weeks ago, I discovered Linda Barty's YouTube channel. And I'd already seen her on BuzzFeed, on the BuzzFeed video page thingy do now. And I remembered an article talking about her project where she stopped dating for one year and instead made YouTube videos about writing. And I watched the whole playlist and I've watched it about three times now. And I just, I found it so interesting. And I realised at the time, that's the kind of thing that I would like to make because I like talking about those things. I mean, I like talking about books as well, but I feel like with books you have to be so conscious of trying not to upset anyone who really likes a book if you don't like it or say all the things that you want you want to say or just cram everything into one video and I don't know, it just feels like a lot of pressure so I don't do it and I don't really... F I think I, I feel like I should but I don't so I thought it's probably a good thing to try and document stuff because I really want to document stuff at the moment and I want to document my progression with writing I mean I started properly writing about four years ago so it would have been better to start then but it's never too late <laughs> Because I, I want to I want to do it now and I'm going to. My notes are like pretty minimal for this and I've just I've kind of lost track of what I was doing. Okay, the beginning, right. Go. About four years ago I started writing this story and I got about fifteen thousand words in, I think, and I'd never got that far before. I'd always given up on the story by then. But I hadn't yet, and it was really exciting. I did I I think I did the Camp Nanorimo first. And so I did that, but I used the 15,000 original words as well as the rest of them. And I think I only just managed to win. So I wasn't great at it the first time around. I was 13-ish. So, yeah, I was about 13. So I did pretty well for somebody who was 13 and never tried anything like this before. In November, um, I wrote the next book. It's a bit dodged, to be honest. It wasn't great. And I barely finished the first one, and I uh, I just have like it was like the most plot holy, ridiculous tropey story ever. It was actually awful, like genuinely. So after I wrote the second one, and I hadn't even finished that one, I just got to fifty thousand words, and I thought, okay, I'll revise the first one. So I've tried to revise the first one several times, and the first of which did did very little, I think. Like I don't really want to look at anything prior to 2014 to be honest like anything before then is not very good so I'm just like I'll just leave it because I don't really fancy it and so then I started trying to work out like the plot holes and what was going wrong in this draft that I didn't like so I could fix it and I spent <laughs> about two years trying to do that and then after a while there are various nanorimos and cat nanorimos thrown into this at some point like, I don't really remember properly, <laughs> which is all the more reason to document it. Anyway, after about two years of trying to revise this and try to rewrite it several times, I decided to give up. Maybe that was just the story. The story was the problem and that was what I needed to sort out or abandon, really, at this instant. I just thought I should abandon it and come back to it maybe another time or maybe never and I would try and write a new story for the 2014 Nanomimo. And I tried to do the preparation and stuff, I have that um, ready set novel book, which is actually very helpful, but I'm just not very good at planning stuff like that, so <laughs> I don't usually use it to its full extent, but I should. Anyway, I tried to write the story and it was awful. It was genuinely awful. Like, I wasn't even trying, like, to get the story out. Like, I had no idea what the story was. It had no story effectively. There were some things I still like about it but most of all I just it wasn't good and the characters didn't make any sense and I don't even remember half the characters names. That needed a lot more planning maybe if I were going to write that story. But what I learned from that experience was that book is definitely not the book whereas the one that I wanted to go back to writing the whole time while I was trying to write that last book, the really really awful one with terrible characters, was the first book. I really wanted to go back to it and I wanted to go back to those characters because over at that point, about the two-ish years that I'd spent with those characters, I'd made them pretty good, I think. Like, I built them <laughs> relatively sufficiently. I realised I wanted to go back to it. And I thought, okay, well, I can rewrite it again. So that's what I did at some point during 2015. I can't really remember when. Oh, no, I did. I, start I think I started November 2015. I rewrote the first story again. And that I think that was the, first, the third actual rewrite of this story. 
and I don't mind. Like, I wanted to do it. I wanted to, but I was also kind of angrily wanting to rewrite the story because I never find it, I can never get back through and reread what I've already written. Like, it's just too painful almost. And the amount of times I've restarted the beginning is ridiculous. It's like when you start revising and you start revising the really early things several times and then you do like the last thing once maybe. And yeah, so that's that. And still, I'm not entirely sure what happens at the end. And also, I'm not really an outliner, so it'll go where it goes, and I'm okay with that. But it's just the ending that I can't seem to get right, <laughs> ever. Anyway, going back to the fact that I rewrote the whole doodah. I rewrote it in November. I think I rewrote it during the July as well, but then I rewrote it again in November. Anyway, and now I'm rewriting it again. Or am I? I've reached this point where I've decided I don't want to rewrite it again. Around now and like the past year or so I've been kind of obsessed with writing a certain amount of words per day or like doing a NaNoWriMo and making sure I'm getting the 50,000 words but not caring as much or as much as I should about the quality of the writing. I mean I wanted it to be good and I cared about it but I always put get this many words done tonight, get this, get to this point in the story, anything like that. It's just it's not good for me anymore. Which is something I want to talk about more because I think I need to discuss it for my own good. But anyway, that brings us forward to today and the Linda Barsi's videos. I rewatched them all recently, a bit more recently than the first time I watched them. And I realised it has so many good things to talk about in there. I just need to apply it to my own life and get it sorted out because I'm not very happy with the story in, in its current state. So I'm doing that. And I tried at the beginning of March to do a kind of NaNoWriMo March and I couldn't do it in April because April's too close to my exams and I need to revise but I thought okay if March is just enough time and before my exams that I could probably do revision and work at the same time and then it kind of failed. I tried to set out to do 1,500 words a day which is a little bit less than the NaNoWriMo schedule and I don't think for one day I wrote as many words as I should do. I think I need the shame of when you have NaNoWriMo and there are other people doing the same thing as you and they're updating their word count and you aren't because you're not doing any writing and I need that, I need that shame to like linger on me <laughs> I need it to drive me forward whereas if it's just me writing I can't really do it and especially with this project where as much as I'm excited about it and I love it and I want it to be good I don't have the same energy as if I were writing a new story because when you're writing a new story, you can just write whatever you want. The sorting it out later it, bit is what I struggle with. Because I just don't. <laughs> it's like any kind of work I do for college or for writing, I just kind of don't read it afterwards. I don't know what, I don't know why. I just don't. It just doesn't happen. I don't want to. And I, I can't look at it. Like, I just can't. My plan for future, for future, for the future, just document how I'm go doing writing and discuss things that I'm finding difficult at the time. <sighs> there are so many things I want to talk about writing and I want to... I just like documenting stuff at the moment, I don't know why. I hope that I'll be able to do it. This isn't. I'm not going to tell myself I'm going to do it for a whole year or do it for any number of time. I just want to be able to document stuff and talk about stuff when I feel the need to because I don't think I'm particularly good at remembering <laughs> how stuff went or when stuff happened without, if unless I really try and think about it because I'm not really a diary person either so I need some way to document my life as much as I like making videos about um, like doing tags and about books specifically I can't continue to do that because one, I don't read often enough anymore because I'm too busy with college work and Netflix, honestly. <laughs> this is about me documenting stuff and I'm leaving it out there and it might help someone maybe. Because I like talking about writing and I've read a lot of writing advice. So maybe this will be helpful. Although maybe other people can help me as well. I don't know. We'll see. Ah, <sighs> do I have anything else to say? Not really. Oh yes, so thank you Linda Barcy for having a fantastic idea for a series of videos and I really like your videos. Yeah. <laughs> right. I hope you have a nice day. Because why wouldn't I want you to have a nice day? I hope everyone has a nice day. That'll be good. Right. See you later.